Hey guys, you know I like to keep things simple. I like to keep my gear to a minimum. But sometimes it's fun to try out something a little different. Uh, enter the Godox Strip Box. Now this is something that uh, you know a lot of people use. You can use these for rim lights, for side lights, double side lights, hair lights. And uh, a lot of people are even using these thin little soft boxes for key lights. And these are actually pretty good. These are made by Godox and uh, I bought a set of two. I'm gonna show you how I put this together and then I'm going to run through a few demos that I shot to show you what you can do with these. Here are the soft box rods. There are four of them. They appear to be the same on either end, which is helpful because sometimes they're not and you don't know which end to put where. Uh, this is the speed ring with the Bowens mount. It's got several holes for tension rods in different configurations. Uh, this is the interior baffle that attaches to the inside of the box with little spring clips. Now this is smaller than the front face diffuser panel. The front face diffuser attaches to the lip of the soft box with strips of hook and loop fasteners or what we often call Velcro. Now this is the main piece of the soft box and I gotta tell you it feels very durable and well made and you can see the inside is reflective silver material. Now there are a couple of loops along the four creases inside the box where the rods go. Now I stick the rod through this loop and I just use this elastic loop here for connecting the inner baffle. One end of the rod gets inserted into its pocket on the edge of the box. And I'll just repeat this with the other three rods. All four ends of the rods meet in the middle of the soft box and this is where we insert the rods into the holes on the speed ring. I've actually made little marks over some of the holes so that I wouldn't have to try and remember which ones to use each time I do this. I don't want to you know, get the spacing wrong on the rods and it's hard enough trying to secure them into the holes. I don't want to get the wrong one and have to remove the end of the rod and try another one. And you know, to be perfectly honest, I'm not even sure that I'm using the correct holes or spacing, but uh, what I uh, have here works, so that's what I'm going with. There's some handy flaps here that need to be fastened, again with the hook and loop strips. And here's the inside of the box after we've got uh, everything set up. We've got the rods and speed ring all connected. Okay, now it's time to set up the inner baffle, which helps spread the light around the box more evenly. And the baffle connects to the elastic loops in the box with these little clips. Uh, I gotta tell you, they're so small, I'm not having an easy time with them, but uh, eventually I get everything uh, hooked up. And once that inner baffle is secured, it's time to place the front face or the outer diffuser panel. Again, this sticks to the Velcro-like material on the lip of the box. Now, I'm placing it near the inner edge, which creates a recessed edge to the box, and it also gives me room to attach a grid if I want to, and that attaches in pretty much the same way. Now you can use a strobe or speed light as your light source. I'm going to use a speed light with a Bowens or S-type adapter to connect to the softbox. This knob right here can be loosened or tightened to help control the position of the softbox and light connection. Now when you've got everything set up the way that you want it to, uh, this all just mounts up to a light stand just like you'd expect. I'm going to show you how you can do the same thing with a larger strobe. Now this strobe has the Bowens type connector built in and it's got a built in swivel so we don't need an extra adapter like we did with the speed light. Okay, now let's take a look at the quality and pattern of light produced by a strip box. Now I'm using a constant light here to make it easier to visualize the light pattern. Of course, normally we'd be using a flash as our light source. Okay, yes, the strip light is a narrow light source, but the light pattern produced is still rounded. And that's just like your flash, which is probably a rectangular flash head, but the light produced is not a perfect rectangle, it's rounded. 
Uh, at the same time, the light's still being shaped. Light is definitely concentrated in the center and it falls off gradually in line with the general shape of the strip box. We're using a grid which tightens the overall throw of the light. Let's take the grid off and see what the throw looks like without it. Now you can see without the grid, it's a much wider area of light, which is probably to be expected. Now, this is a pretty big spread actually, and we're less than two feet from the front panel uh, to the blue seamless. Now let's take a look at what we can do with a pair of strip lights. And we'll use our mannequin for these demos and we'll just start without any strip lights. Here, we're using a round soft box for our key light. We're going to start here and we'll add one strip light to camera right rear of the subject to get this effect, which is really a kind of rim light uh, and side hair light effect. And we can do the same on the other side if we like, or we can use two strip lights at the same time. Now here's a wide shot of this lighting setup. For each strip light, I'm using a Godox TT685 and an S-Type mount. The main light, which is the round 36 inch uh, glow easy lock softbox, has a Godox AD400 Pro as its light source. And all three lights are controlled wirelessly from the camera position with a Godox X1T. I've got links for all this gear in the video description. The two strip lights are approximately three and a half feet from the subject. And the key light is about two feet from the subject's face. The rim lights are at one half power and the key light is 1 64th power. Now for all of the setups I'm gonna show you, the camera settings remain at ISO 400, F9, and a shutter speed of 1 250th of a second. Now here's another way to use a strip light. Here we're using the same round soft box for our key light, but we've placed a single strip light soft box low and pointed up at our background to get this graduated light pattern. The first one has our TT685 at a quarter power. And this shot is the same thing, but now at one half power. And the key light is still at 1 64th power. And here's a wide shot of the setup. Now here are some quick examples of using strip lights as double side lights. Now in the past, I've just used bare flash or umbrellas for double side lighting and for hard angle lighting for physique shots and figure studies and things like that. But I can see how strip lights you know, make this type of setup easier to control. And by the way, both side lights here are 18 inches from the subject and we're still using the TT685s and they're at a quarter power. Again, for all of these setups, the camera settings remain at ISO 400, F9, and shutter speed is 1 250th of a second. Now I wanted to make a point of showing you something I've mentioned in a previous video about using larger light sources. A really large strip light softbox might give you the idea that it can create an even illumination for like a top to bottom shot of a figure. But consider that every point on the subject is receiving some amount of light from the entire light source. And that means that when the light is positioned like this, the subject's face isn't just getting light from the top portion of the softbox. The majority of surface area of the strip light is actually below the subject's face. So most of the light is actually striking her from below, creating uh, the under lighting pattern that you can see here. What makes it worse is that the strongest area of light is below the face at the center part of the softbox. Distance here is about 18 inches from light to subject and uh, we're at a quarter power on the TT685. Now, if we pull the softbox away to about 43 inches, we're gonna lessen the under lighting effect, but it's still not the best lighting. And you can get this type of issue with any larger light source, whether it's an umbrella or a softbox or whatever. If it's a big light source and you're trying to use it this way, if it's not positioned correctly, you're gonna get uh, potentially this under lighting effect on the face. And like I said earlier, some photographers are using strip light soft boxes as key lights. And that's totally legitimate because they make you know really excellent key lights and you can adjust their positions to achieve uh, different kinds of light fall off. For example, I'm using this placement where the light is about two feet from the subject's face and the power is a uh, quarter power with a TT685 as a light source, and I get this effect. If I reposition the light like this, I get a different look. Uh, maybe it's uh, easiest to notice this as a change in the way that the light falls 
across the background. Now here's an example of what happens when we move the strip light farther back. And here, you know, you sort of lose the effect of an up close narrow light as it starts looking more like an ordinary light to me anyway. Now another thing I want to mention is that these things can be kind of heavy, especially once you attach a pretty decent sized strobe to this. Now you can use speed lights, but even those uh, along with this will be pretty heavy if you've got this set up on a boom arm like this, like maybe you're doing some bodyscapes and you need to hang this uh, a little extended off of a boom arm or you're using something like this for a hair light. Um, I did a test and I had my boom arm not extended too far and I had to actually have a counterweight of about 16 pounds just to come close and the light stand that I was using really wasn't something that I was comfortable using. You're going to want to use a C-stand, something really heavy duty if you're going to hang this on a boom arm. Okay, so what do I think? Well, I like the idea of, of being able to use something like this for a different kind of light fall off. Uh, but to be honest, for the type of portraiture that I do, I really don't see this as more practical or useful than say a round softbox. And honestly, I really don't like the dimensions of something like this. It's just too hard to transport. And if you're gonna break it down and try to build this thing up on location, well, you saw how, uh, what it takes to put this thing together. It's not something I wanna do. I don't wanna break this down and build it up uh, too often. But I will say that this could be handy in locations where a longer, thinner modifier is just gonna be easier to place than a big old, you know, round softbox. So yeah, I'm gonna stick with my round softboxes for most of the portraiture work that I do. But I think that this can be very useful depending on uh, the types of looks that you're going for. I'm definitely gonna use strip boxes if they suit the purpose. All right, guys, I hope you found this video useful. If you liked it, go ahead and click that like button, subscribe, comment, all those good things. And uh, hey, that's about it for today. See you next time.